So this is going to be a demonstration on how to do surface to surface soldering. You're going to need um, a larger piece of brass. This is just a one inch by one inch square. And then um, there's pieces that are cut one half by one inch, but I would suggest cutting them down even smaller so that you're not using so much solder when you try to do your sample. Um, another thing that you wanna do is you have to make sure that both pieces are completely flat. I can see that this first piece is totally flat. Um, and what you should be able to see is this other piece that I have here is, um, it's curved. Technically, you always wanna hit on the high part of the metal to make sure that it actually goes down all the way. And you do have to be careful not to hit your fingers. So um, part of the reason I, I hit that one is just so that that's flat for you. I can see that this little piece that I have, actually it needs to be hammered just a little bit. I took a um, square steel block from over by the anvil table in order to do this. I wouldn't recommend doing this on the tables all the time, depending on what other students are doing, but as you're um, soldering, it should be fine. Um, so the next thing that I need to do is I'm gonna take a little piece of sandpaper and actually I'm gonna uh, rip off two pieces here. And this one just sort of kind of came along with for the ride, so I'm gonna hang on to that one. But I need to actually like sand the surface of this piece of brass so that it's really nice and clean. And part of the reason I have this other piece of sandpaper is to hold where I just sanded so that I don't accidentally get dirt or fingerprints back on that piece that I just tried to um, get clean so that I can solder. So hopefully you can see uh, it's actually really nice and clean. Then I'm going to take and I'm gonna actually sand my smaller piece and it's gonna be a lot harder for me to sand this piece just because of the size. Um, so the size that I have here, I do have to get the entire surface. So there's actually a little portion, hopefully you can see this. There's a little portion right here that I can see that I have not sanded yet. I actually have to go and get all of that out and it should, sorry. Um, it should all look like what's right in here. And so I'm gonna need to just sand that a little bit more. So another thing that you wanna think about, I'm gonna actually use um, a steel tweezers in order to put my piece of uh, sanded metal um, into the lid of my tool kit. And I have my solder that I'm gonna take over there and I also need my fly. And then I'm gonna take my whole top and go over to the soldering booth in order to solder my pieces together. So I am going to use the tripod and the um, steel mesh for soldering this piece together. I need a tin snips, um, the tweezers, and a striker, and of course my trusty safety goggles, or safety glasses, excuse me, and of course only the cool kids wear them like this, right? <laughs> um, and I also wanna turn on my light just so that I can kinda see what I'm doing the, this first time as I'm working. Uh, right now, I'm going to actually sand my piece of solder. I am using hard solder um, because, again, it's the first time that I'm soldering something, so I want to make sure that I'm um, using the one that melts at the highest temperature. Um, I also need to make sure that I don't have anything dangling on me, so I'm going to take my jewelry off, um, put my goggles down. Uh, I'm going to cut a couple of pieces and put them in my lid to my tool kit and I cut again vertically first and then I'm just going to cut a couple of pieces and you notice how I kind of um, use the tin snips to hold the solder down so that the um, solder doesn't go flying every which direction and I'm going to cut one more little row here just to make sure I have enough to cover what I'm trying to do. So the first thing that I'm going to do and I'm going to move this out of the way so you can see is I'm gonna actually pick up my little piece that I have because I'm gonna do the uh, little piece first. What we're gonna do is cover this completely with solder, um, melt it, and then we'll have to take a break in between. We're gonna have to actually pickle this piece before we can um, actually get them to solder down. So I'm gonna grab the flux, and I'm even going to put 
I'm gonna put a little bit of the flux um, on my lid, pick up my piece, and then I'm going to take this flux and go on both sides so that I prevent fire scale and I'm going to put it up on the tripod. As I do that, I'm also going to pick up pieces of flux with my flux brush. So there was a little bit of flux on the brush and it allowed the pieces of solder to stick to it. Then what I want to do is I'm going to um, actually deposit them on that piece of brass and it's going to take a little bit of time you're going to have to um, arrange the pieces around the piece and what i would suggest doing to conserve solder is we're going to put these pieces on the outer edge or on the perimeter of that square and so i'm going to pick up another couple pieces um, you do have to have pieces about um, three millimeters apart from each other just because you wanna make sure that you have enough solder to make a really nice seam around the entire piece that you're doing. And you can see I'm struggling just a tiny bit to try to get it off of the tweezers. Sometimes that happens. Um, and you do just need to be patient as you're doing that. It takes a little bit of uh, coordination and patience in order to get those little tiny pieces of solder where they're supposed to go. And I need a couple more pieces. I'm going to rotate this just so that I can put this piece over here. I need like three more pieces. Oops. The next thing that I want to do is I'm going to turn on my torch and also the vent so that all the gas goes out of the um, way, but I'm gonna actually like just dry this with a really feathery flame. So I'm gonna get anything that's flammable away from my station, and then I'm gonna go and melt that. Again, it's completely sanded. I have not touched it in between when I pickled. And the pickle's probably gonna take about five or 10 minutes. You wanna make sure to get all of the fire scale off of your piece. Then I'm actually um, putting flux on both sides of my piece. I'm going to set the larger piece down first. Then I'm going to pick up my smaller piece that has the solder on it. Oh and I'm gonna put it on top of the larger piece. So now that I've pickled my smaller piece, and I can tell it's pickled because there's no fire scale, and hopefully you can even see where it was kind of fire scaled, I'm going to put flux on my small piece, and I'm also going to put flux on the larger piece that I have. So I'm gonna pick this up with a tweezer so that I don't get any dirt on my piece. So here I'm um, fluxing both sides. I wanna put the um, larger piece down first and then I'm going to actually put the piece of solder in between the two pieces and I'm, I actually have to look at my piece because 
I want to make sure that I have the sanded piece down so I could actually tell that it's sanded there. Then I'm going to put the solder in between the pieces. I know it looks like there's a piece of copper on here right now, um, but the flux must have been contaminated. And so therefore there's an ionization on my piece of copper. But again, the solder's in between the two pieces. I'm going to actually dry this and get it to solder together. you want to be aware of right now is as I am drying the flux, I want the flux to be bubbled up in white. It should not turn a dark black color. If, I, if that happens, I've actually heated it too much. So I'm just going to heat this until the entire thing turns white and like crusty. Um, and sometimes, like right now, it doesn't really matter where my piece is. But depending on what your piece looks like, you might want your piece in an exact location. So you're going to have to bubble the flux up slowly so that your piece is exactly where you want it. Once I have everything bubbled up, I'm going to change my flame to that really pointy, large flame. It's about, I mean, if you look at the size of my finger compared to the flame, it's about three or four inches large. And the tip of this flame is the hottest part again. I'm gonna take that and go underneath my piece. The tip of that flame is right on top of my larger piece of metal. And what you'll notice as I'm soldering is that you'll actually see along the seam, right, in, right along in here, you'll actually see the solder completely once it melts. And once you see the metal start dancing like that, the solder will melt pretty quickly thereafter. So there you hopefully saw, I have to make sure right over here, I don't have the solder through yet. Oop. You do have to be careful because if you push like that, you might accidentally get solder in places you don't want. So that's actually finished. And then I'm going to take my piece off of the tripod, quench it, and then I would pickle this and clean this up. 